hello. For those of you who haven't already met me, my name is Ash and I am in charge of the Digital Marketing for Museum. So I deal with the social media and the video output, the YouTube channel, etc., etc. As part of that job, I'm very fortunate. And when Steve goes out collecting, I follow him and I, I document what he does. For those of you who don't know, Steve's our in-house collector, preparator and curator. The collection was mostly collected by Steve. What wasn't has been donated and then prepared or curated by Steve. So why have you got me to, uh, talking to you today? Well, Steve, as part of his collecting, ignores a lot of what he finds because the collection is here for scientific purposes. So Steve will only collect what he deems scientifically interesting or what the collection is lacking in terms of evidence for scientific analysis or scientific research. So that means that there are specimens that get left behind or things that I find that Steve isn't interested in, which, you know, could be a little bit disheartening, but <laughs> it does mean that Steve doesn't collect everything he sees. And why is this relevant now? Well, in one of our recent videos, you'll have seen Steve collect a fish clythrum. And on that day, at the end, you see us walk past and point out a little fish called Tharsis, which Steve wasn't going to collect. The collection doesn't need any more examples of this fish. So he was gonna leave it behind. However, I decided I wanted to collect it. So here it is, a little slab, small fish. You can see the vertebra run down the side there, right around the back, you can see. So what's gonna happen next is I, who specialize in digital media and film work, I'm gonna prep this fossil. I've never prepped a fossil in my life. And I'm gonna use Steve's laboratory and workshop and, and see how it turns out. So you guys get to join me on this, how we put it, experiment as it were. Um, so yeah, I hope this uh, works out okay. So Steve, what have we got here? Sorry, can't help it. Oh, I know you can't. What, what, what have we it? got here? I have to get my glasses on Ash because being an old fella, I, you know. That's fair enough. But I know you, Well, what have we got here? This is what you found, wasn't it? Yeah. Just a series of warm vertebrae by the sea. But if you look there, mm -hmm. there's not vertebrae. That looks to be, I would have thought, either the base of the tail or maybe the skulls up here. And then when you turn it over, you can see, and I just marked it where that skull would be because that's where you're going to start. And you can see that, see if the camera can see, I doubt if it can, but there's a ring around here and you can just see the vertebra here and it goes round, I don't know how far, but um, we shall see when you start to prep it. And what exactly do you think it is? It's a fish called Tharsis, hang on. It's one of these little fellas. There's a complete one. And I expect they swim in shoals of thousands, rather like sprats. Um, we find a lot of them, but preservation wise, um, this one's got the vertebral column and the skull, um, a little petrol fin there, bit of the tail there, but the scales are missing. We've got other ones that show all the scales as well, but they're quite rare. And most people overlook them because they're actually quite small, diminutive little things. Um, but I think we've got quite a few in the collection, but this is the first one we, well, you spotted. Um, there's actually curled round in a sort of, a circle, won't be a semicircle, but anyhow, it's um, so we wait to see what preservation it is in. I should have surmised it's probably just the vertebral column with the ribs coming off of it, but we'll see. Hmm. Right, so I'm going to make start prepping this, and the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the top layers of shale using um, this air pen or sometimes called air scribes. I've never used one of these. This is this is a first attempt. Hopefully, this won't go too badly. I'm just removing shale that's that's quite far from the bone. Um, that just may get in the way later, just so that I don't potentially damage the specimen. From what I gather, this fish could be very, very delicate.
Now, I must admit, I'm very, very fortunate to be able to use an air abrasive. A lot of people won't have access to this, and this makes the preparation job a lot easier, especially for someone who's never done it before. But I must admit, using it is a very strange experience. You're kind of holding it, and it's, it's like watching the rock melt away in front of your eyes, which I've never worked with rock matrices, and it's a very strange experience going from using wood tools and practical tools in that sense to then actually just watching this this kind of surface which you know hard as rock to disappear in front of your eyes using this is actually a really nice experience the abrasive power there that's actually in this the sodium bicarbonate really nice to use it bounces directly off the harder bones that being said still have to be incredibly careful around the softer bones and I must admit there were a few bits of rib that were across the vertebrae that I didn't quite see in time and accidentally lost those which is a great shame but you can't bring them back Now doing this first hand is quite a change for me, I've watched Steve do this countless times from varying specimens, from ammonites to fish to a whole ichthyosaur which he's still working on, and it's one thing watching it, um, but when you actually come and do this, this is when you realise just how much, just how enjoyable it actually is doing it for yourself, like taking your find from the field to making it something completely different by actually exposing it from the matrix it's I get why Steve finds a thrill in it uncovering something that you found it, it does bring you some kind of sense of elation it's, it's, it's strange because it's addictive and therapeutic and I get why once you start doing this it's one of those hobbies that it's probably going to be quite difficult to give up so We'll see how this fares for me. So what I'm doing first is I'm going around the length of the fish, exposing the vertebrae and the harder bones, which is, as I mentioned earlier, when I uncovered some of the ribs. I'm doing this to, one, establish how long the, uh, how big the fish actually is, but it also gives me time to practice and get a feel for how to uh, use this air abrasive before, without, um, before I get to the finer bones, and hopefully potentially limit the amount of damage I can do when exposing the smaller, finer ribs and anything else that may be there. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the air pen to remove the, the thicker matrix, um, which allows me to get closer to the fish, which I'll then go back to using the air abrasive. Again, still working on the, the vertebrae here. Although the air abrasive does bounce off a lot of the harder bones, it's still something you have to be very careful about. The harder nature of the, the bone surface means that as soon as that kind of is penetrated, it does start to deteriorate with the, the air abrasive. So you do still have to be careful.
you can see at this point I found the tail and the, some of the ribs have appeared and the ribs closest to camera um, you can kind of see disappear into the matrix um, so I'm just going to remove some more the matrix with the air pen just to see if they carry on or whether they are or whether that is just the end of the ribs there as you can see it, the matrix can separate really nicely and lift off and there's a oyster as well that's gone but even then it can separate and then all of a sudden it's quite difficult to get off again Right now I've moved some of that excess matrix, I'll um, go back to using the air abrasive and hopefully revealing a bit more of, of this fossil. Um, as you can see uh, the majority of the ribs appear to be exposed, part of the tail and part of the skull is now visible. Um, I'm just going to continue to work my way around exposing more of the ribs and more of the skull. Just gently going over with the air abrasive to expose more and more. So as you can see, more and more of the ribs are exposed, most of the skull is exposed here. And as you can see they're very, very fine, very delicate. I've lowered the powder flow here and I've lowered the pressure to try and avoid damaging them. The ribs on the outside of the vertebrae there effectively encircled very, very fine, almost non-existent. And there's also a small ammonite enclosed in the rib cage. What are we doing it? Don't know. Uh, Steam association, I suppose. It's quite a pretty fish. It's come out really well so far. Just a bit from the first crack the rod. Looking really good. Pretty much done now, just revealing the last few bits of the tail. This took nearly two and a half hours to do, which I didn't think was too bad. I think Steve would have been a lot quicker <laughs> with his many, many years of experience. However, for my first time, I don't think it went too badly, and the specimen still seems really nice, really nicely intact. As Steve mentioned before, not very diagnostic, not very important. So this is mine to keep. And now the block just needs cutting down and we can find a home for it from there. Steve's just gonna cut this down for me and add a little bit of paraloid and then we should be done.
and there we go. My first prep job. And it's this little fish. And I think it turned out really rather well. <laughs>